Hello, so as promised, it's my first Facebook Live video weathering the uh, Bandai uh, Star Wars Snow Speeder. So you can see I've done all the red panels using some chipping, using some masking fluid. Uh, I'm going to go back and do some more chipping on that a little bit later. And the mo model's been given an overall satin coat uh, just to seal the paint finish in, really. Um, it's a really nice model. I really like the little decals here, just the little touches there and there. So first thing I'm going to do is um, basically just dry brush the uh, speed brake compartments here and here. Just give them a very light grey dry brush. And then I'm going to go back in and start the weathering process using some oil. So first up, I'm just going to get my grey. And I'm using this undiluted from the pot pretty much. So obviously you want the pigment to be as concentrated as possible. So there we go, just taking a little there. Ugh. What I'm going to do is wipe off pretty much as much of the excess as I can. You see, so there's very little left on the brush. There we go. And just going in. Just catching the edges of the detail. Again, when all this is done, the weathering's done, probably go back and add a little bit more. You see, it just helps bring out the detail a little bit. And for uh, anyone who's interested, that was painted using life colour warm black, just to provide a bit of contrast. So there we go. So that's pretty straightforward. It doesn't take much more than that, but it just really brings that area to life. Maybe just add a little bit on the back of these spines as well, not much, just to where the areas would catch the light. There we go. So that's the first stage. Next up, I'm going to add some uh, washes using a very appropriately named <coughs> oil brushes, Starship Filth. Now, all these are these are basically oil paints. Um, the predecessor to these, as you can see, came pretty much oil paint tubes like this. Um, these are a little bit more convenient. They're, they're um, easy to use and less wasteful because the problem is you find with the tubes, one, they dry out, two, you end up throwing a lot of it away. So these are a lot more economical in the long run. So I'm going to add some on my mixing palette or tray even. So you only need to add a little bit. You can always come back and do some more. <clears throat> and then some thinners like so just for reference <clears throat> I'm using the uh, Albertan Odalis thinner basically turpentine pretty much and I'm also just going to put a little bit of the thinners in there just in case I want to blend something in or I'm not happy with the overall paint finish now for brushes I really like these these AK interactive um, Nylon brushes, I think they're AK five seven seven. Things they're really long. They're not very expensive. They're about two pound fifty three pounds. So you can get through them, um, but they seem to work really well for mixing the washes. Obviously, they're a long brush, so they draw a lot of the uh, of the, uh, of the the fluid up to the fennel of the brush. So as you'll see in a minute, I'm just adding an overall wash to take up a little bit of the excess. So starting around here, you see it starts pulling and really bringing out the details. Yeah, it's really, really satisfying to work with as well. And just by capillary action, see, it's got a touch there and it goes into all the recesses of the model, so on and so forth. <clears throat> okay, just like so. Uh, I'm sorry, the angle of my phone means I can't see if anyone's commenting. I hope someone's watching. <laughs> and I hope it's of use. Um, you see, this is kind of how I spend my nights most of the time. Lockdown or no lockdown. So you see here, I'm just adding an overall wash. It's got a really nice texture to it. Just adds a really nice layer of uh, of muck, really. And then obviously subsequent washes, you go back and add a little bit more. So I'm not being too specific now. I'm just giving an overall going over. And you can see there, it's gone on a little thick. So just mix some thinner in, and then you can go back and. Just take off some of the excess. Now again, don't do this over just the basic paint finish. If you do, the problem is 
or you do it over a matte finish, the texture of the the varnish means that the the, the wash is going to really dig into the to the overall layer, and where it's uh, not a smooth finish, you won't be able to basically blend it in as I'm doing here. It also protects the paint. If you start going at it too hard, you're going to have problems. But if you really start scrubbing away, it's going to start going through the paint down to the primer. Uh, there's a voice of experience there. I've done it <laughs> several times. I get a bit too enthusiastic. So there we go. So it's a start just there, adding a bit more. And there is a detail. And I'm going to go back again. I'll show you in a minute. And like here, I'm going to add some black probably around there as well. But just giving this an overall wash. Now again, being sparing as possible. So I hate wasting, uh, hate wasting this stuff. So I'm just going to add a little bit more up now because it seems to have gone on really quite nicely. So there we go. Just a bit more on the mixing tray. Some more thinners. And after a while, you just get the hang of the consistency, I, I think. I mean, that's... Not too thick. Let's give it a good mix. You can see where it runs down the side of the of the tray. Just an idea of how thick it's going to be. So there we go. So again, just on the top here, I'm going to add a little bit more. And I'm trying to do it in the the, air, the direction of the airflow. Obviously, the thing we go through the air. This is just basic washes, and then you're going to add a few more once this is dried. And they really don't take that long. I mean, I use a an old um, a uh, traditional daylight bulb for my painting alongside a halogen one and it gives us quite a bit of heat so it works quite nicely because it actually manages to to, uh, to to dry the washes quite quickly so you can work reasonably quickly but the good thing with this is if you don't like the effect you get you just add some more of the turpentine and uh, put it on and you can take it away or add to your heart's contents there's a bit of a blemish just there in the paint finish <laughs> I'm just going to cover up with some more weathering. <laughs> Not cheating or anything. There we go. So again, you can use this as an overall wash I'm doing here. You can also, slightly more concentrated and go back to that, you can just add it. Just That's what they call a pin wash. You see, I'm just dabbing it on there. And where, they, where it's so thin, it'll go into the details and really, really, you know, illustrate the uh, the finer details of the model. So there we go. So just again, the first of the weathering stages, just trying to get an overall overall finish. So hopefully in the next couple of weeks, a friend of mine has asked me to build him uh, one of the Bandai Y-Wings. So I thought if people uh, enjoy this video, maybe it'd be a good idea to do a step-by-step -step tutorial. Just let me know if that's somebody you'd be interested in or if there's anything you're not sure about. Just leave it in the comments and I'll try and explain it as best I can. So again, just adding an overall wash. It's really nice there. You've got some really nice gritty kind of dirty effects. So again, just going to give this an overall wash and then I'm going to go back. Do some slightly more specific pin washes and areas of detail. There we go. See, I think the more random and you are with it, the better the effect. If you try and be too methodical, it just looks very deliberate. I mean, so there we go. Just got to add a little to the cockpit. The canopy, rather. Yeah, there we go, and it's starting to look be quite sort of uh, used and abused already. So look at the light. Yeah, good stuff. There we are. So it's going to go back with a slightly more concentrated um, wash of the Starship filth, just around the laser cannons and the engines and so on and so forth. So this is a little thicker this time and I can't really give a ratio I, I just do it almost by sight so this is going to be a little thicker you can see it runs down there 
there's a lot more the ratio of uh, thinner to pigment is a lot higher so if I just go like this see it's just going to go in all the recesses of the details <clears throat> There you go. See areas like this hatch, just touch, not not painting it on, just again using capillary action for it all to go in the recesses. Just around the engine. Or laser cannon rather. Back of this one. Just around there as well. So there we are. And obviously Areas in recesses have slightly higher concentration, so just right around there, so on and so forth. There you go. And things like obviously when the weathering process is finished, it might spray on some really diluted black to simulate sort of stains around the laser cannons. All kinds of stuff you can do, and and you can do staining on the. Holding the airbrush at an oblique angle, you can kind of spray back as well, get a really nice effect there. So there we go. A little thick there at the front, but obviously the front of the ship would 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 get most of the marks. So and again, I'm see, I'm putting some down, and then I'm wiping it in the direction of the airflow, so you get those nice streaks. And this is something you can build up again. It's not. This is a nice base colour wash I can go back and I'm going to add some different colours as I go on I don't even, if the paint will be dry well the, the oils will be dry in time for this video but it gives you an idea so there we go so we've got some really nice details starting to come out there and the other thing is as well I think it's uh, especially working with oils you can kind of think you've overdone it but I think almost a third of the finish kind of disappears once the uh, turpentine evaporates, it kind of leaves, obviously leaves a significant amount of the pigments, but it can look a little bit much, and then you come back to it next day, and it's not too bad. But again, it's not to say, obviously you can always add more on. It's difficult to take it off, especially when it's dried fully. There we go. So there we've got a nice, dirty appearance around the side there. Maybe add a little bit more on there in a minute, and... Uh, what I'm going to do now is add some black to the engine compartment. <clears throat> so same thing again, just the ore brush of black here. So still got some turpentine just to wick away anyway, if it's too much. And this will be quite concentrated because uh, I want to pick out some of the details. There we go. That's looking a little thin, as you see, so I'm going to add a bit more. Now, the manufacturers of the videos I show them actually using it straight out of the pot. I, I do tiny bits of that. I just find that it's far more controllable if you mix it up in a mixing tray like this and then just add it as you see fit. So I just run here. Just going to add a few little details just in the recesses and as I said just in the speed break bays here I'm going to add quite a bit just to complement the dry brushing so the dry brushing brings out the highlights I suppose in the uh, the black of the oil adds some shadow to the area that's the general idea and you can go back and forth with this if you're not happy with it always add some more dry brushing but it's the basic principle And again, so I want to just use paint. I mean, the issue is you can. These are obviously pretty much pure pigment and they're really thin. So they go right down into the details. Which works really nicely. You can see, it's just there. It's really adding lots of interest. And again, I'm just going to add a little bit more. An area such as this. And right here, there we go. And then the vents here as well, just a thin, thin coat. You can always come back and add some more. There we go. OK, 
going to be really quite sparing because I don't want to overdo it and then have to come back and add some. Now, as I said, I've got a bit of a problem area here. This is a bit of an issue with the finish. So I think what I'm going to do is just try and blend that in a bit more. Again, being careful not to go in too hard and uh, go down to the base coat. I said I've done that a few times before, but just blending in some of uh, the leading edge of the wings and so on and so forth. <clears throat> there we go. So that's the preliminary uh, stage of weathering with oils. I may go back again and add some more. Just uh, see what uh, I'll see how it turns out. So there we go. So it's basic oil weathering process. You can see I've added some black in there. Added the the dark grey around here. Got a bit of a problem with the finish. I don't know what's going on there, but uh, we'll soon sort that out. Now what I'm going to do is um, basically show the weathering process, or the chipping process rather. So what I'm going to do is take the model off the stand and use the underside, which hasn't really been touched. So there we have it. Now for this, I'm using a really light grey. Um, this is something just I'm going to apply, just use this panel here, just apply to the leading edge as gently as I can and try another straight how I do my chipping. So obviously you've got larger areas like this, we're going to deal with those as well. So using it straight out the pot, so it's really concentrated. So just using the side of the brush. And this is quite light anyway, but it complements what I'm going to do in a minute. So. So I'm just adding like Morse code <laughs> dots and dashes, just so the paint's got something to work with. Okay, so I'm standing some there along the leading edge. We'll put some here as well. I, I I prefer doing this in sections. I find if you do the whole model one, you start forgetting bits. <laughs> and secondly, I, there seems to be a finite amount of time that I can concentrate on doing this. I'll add some of the leading edge here. Now I'm not going along the entire leading edge of the wing. I'm trying to be as random as possible as well. I'm just going to add a bit more to that other bit. Just there. I'm going to add a bit here as well because obviously it might be a bit easier to see what I'm doing. Whoops, a bit too much. But there we go. So just there, fill that bit in a little. Here's like that. So there we go. We'll just add that. I think while that's drying, <clears throat> just give it a minute, it won't take long because it's under the heat lamp. I'll just show you the same thing that I did before. I'm just going to do these quickly before I forget them. These are the speed brakes at the back of the uh, back of the craft. So here we go. And this will help show maybe a little clearer how the uh, how by capillary action the washes work. So you know, mixing up some of that grey starship filth. Take a bit of excess off the brush. So thinking that basically the airflow is effectively going back that way. So I'm just going to drag a little across there. See, that's really quite thick. So you can see it's got a nice build up. So I'm just going to go back with a brush. Just wick off some of it. There we go. It's got a really nice effect straight away. You see this area inside, which is really quite clean. If I had some here, you can see if I just touch the brush to the area, see how it goes in the recesses and so on and so forth. There as well. It's just a really nice, very satisfying way of just adding some real quick weathering to the model. So there we go. So let's go do the other one. Hello Jason, don't worry about being late. <laughs> I think all of us have got plenty of time on our hands at the moment. So there we go. 
I'm just blending that in. Like that. And as usual, I've run out. So <laughs> I'll put a tiny bit, there's a tiny bit left, so I'll add that to the bottom. There we go. Just leave those to dry. Try and make sure it doesn't pull up too much at the back. There we go. Okay, so it's given a bit of time for the grey of the chipping to dry just here. And what I'm going to use is uh, very, it's a, um, it's almost like a, a, a charcoal grey. If you use black, it doesn't look quite right. And you've got to be really quite sparing with this. Again, I'm using it pure straight out of the uh, the pot. Does it really need mixing? Or diluting, sorry. So just making sure there's enough on the brush. And I'm just going on the edge, using the edge of the brush just to get a little bit of chipping effect just like so there we go it's a little stark because the vehicle stuck so i'm not going to add much just a few little bits here and there so obviously the, the the light gray they're really sharp so i'm just done on the edge there so i say you hard the way i look at it is you should hardly notice it it should be something that the second or third time you look at the model you notice the chipping if it leaps out at you too much it's obviously too obvious and it's been overdone but again it's just the white that I put down on very light grey helps sort of highlight the area there it's almost a little too much for me I might go back and knock that back a bit but there we go just there and on the exposed area just adding some random chips and this being the underside obviously you can experiment get a feel for how it's going to look when the model's when you do the upper side, so on and so forth. And this is one of my favourite, <laughs> favourite stages of model making, I know. Peculiar, but there we go. So there we are. So just some really nice subtle chipping just along the edges. And the white complements where the paint would chip. And you can also add other bits where the well, the white hasn't been placed just there see so using the edge of the brush just again especially on the leading edge of the aircraft um, or the, the ship in this case that's where you'd notice uh you'd really notice it i'm using a fine brush for this uh zero sable brush just because i want to have as much control as possible so i'm just going back in here There we go. So just almost where it's at the leading edge, just adding as much as I can. And some areas as well where there isn't any white paint, just to try and make it look as irregular as possible. I'm also thinking obviously that the airflow is going this way, so any debris is going to be hitting the scraping back along the ship like that. So I'm just going to add some along this panel here because I missed that. Yeah, and you can go back and forth as much as you want. It looks a little stark because it hasn't had any weathering. Um, areas like the paint chips here, you can add a little bit. Just again, when it's gone down, you're trying to show where the... I suppose the red's obviously been painted over the grey. So you're trying to show where the paint's gone back. The red insignia markers has gone back to the grey. And then using the uh, the uh, the dark grey to, to show where it's gone down to the actual metal itself. So. I assume they're metal. I mean, this one. This one is. So there we go. Just on the paint chips, just adding. Again, it's been very sparing. If you feel you want to add some more, you can always go back. There we go. So I'm not going to sit here and bore you to do the whole thing and go through the whole thing, but I thought it'd be good just to show the. Uh, the initial process as it were so 
So I'm just able to chips there. And the great thing with Star Wars fantasy subjects in general is no one can tell you you're wrong. <laughs> so uh, there we go. Just adding, there's a C fit, just adding a little bit more to bits of high wear. So, so on and so forth. There we go. And it starts coming together. You see that area there? It's just we're adding really nice, subtle uh, chipping damage to it. So you've got to be very careful though, because it's a fine line between it looking really effective and just being totally unrealistic. And the one thing I think is you really don't want to do is use silver paint. Um, it just doesn't, you'd think it would look right, it just doesn't. So, I mean, what I do is I might add a few very select highlights in silver but very not much at all there we go oh there are people still watching <laughs> fortunately the agonal i've got a real heath robinson contraption i've got the phone uh in a phone charger which is held onto my tripod by elastic bands but it seems to be working okay but the issue is obviously i can't see the screen of the phone so i hope uh this is proving of interest to to a few people so there you go, I'm just adding a bit more chip in there. Just on these spines. Just some random chips here and there. And sometimes you, you, you look at it, you go back and you want to add some more. You don't want it looking too uniform. So it's a case of practice. You sort of build up a large chip like that it looks quite good so it's using the side of the brush a bit more there not much right so i mean that's the basic chipping process you can go along obviously areas like this to get quite worn so on and so forth there i said it sorry and i've tried my best so on and so forth there we are yep so that's that area taken care of again obviously i'm going to add the washes the underside some overspray there that really needs dealing with because there was a area of painting quite work there so you get the basic idea i'm just complementing the scratches i've added with the back paint as well so we go back to the top hopefully the washes are dry by now oh yeah Got quite a nice texture again bit of an issue there i don't really know what i'm going to do it's a good base coat. I'm not, this isn't the final part of the weathering process by any stretch of the imagination. So now it's dried a little bit. I'm just going to blend, blend the oils a little bit more. There we go. And see the black wash I use is really brought out really nice detail in the uh, bays and so on and so forth. So. Just a bit of a blend there. I mean, you can come back a good couple of hours later. I I prefer doing them as they're drying, and then you avoid any uh, any unwanted problems. So um, anyway, I hope this video has been of use. Uh, if you want me to do some more, I was going to do some figure painting ones again. Hopefully, at some point, I'm going to be doing a Y wing in the near future. It'd be good to do a tutorial uh, from the ground up, as it were, starting right at the beginning. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Well, I can turn this thing off.